Welcome to the Introduction to the Shop System webinar. I'm here with Jonah Meyerberg, CTO and co-founder here at Desktop Metal, and we're going to dive deep into the Desktop Metal Shop System, talking through some of the technology behind it, how it works, uh, and then diving into parts and applications and really talking about what the use case for this, this product is. Um, so Jonah, let's first start off talking a little bit about behind the motivation of, uh, of creating this system, right? Some people may know Desktop Metal for the studio system that you see behind us, uh, or for the production system for you know, making mass, mass production quantities of parts. Um, where does the shop system fit in within those, uh, those sort of technologies? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, you know, the, the landscape of metals manufacturing is very diverse, and the production system that we uh, launched back in 2017 uh, addresses uh, the entire um, uh, landscape of complex parts at high volume uh, quantities. The studio system addresses the same thing uh, at low volume for uh, jigs and fixtures, uh, single one-off parts. And there became a very uh, apparent gap between the two in which um, we identified medium volume manufacturers who wanted to utilize digital manufacturing, adv uh, advanced additive manufacturing for metal parts. Um, and the production system was just too big of an investment while the studio system uh, wasn't quite fast enough to keep up with their demand for parts. Uh, and so we launched the studio system to address mid volume manufacturing, like machine shops and job shops. And then as far as uh, the technology behind it, so it uses binder jetting, which is the same underlying technology as the production system. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what that technology is, how it kind of works, and how it turns out a metal part at the end of the day? Sure, yeah. So binder jetting is the, by far the fastest um, and most efficient way to manufacture, uh, additively manufacture metal parts. Uh, it starts with a, a powder, a very fine powder, um, that is spread onto a very flat surface and then an ink jetting process deposits binder where you want the part and not where you don't. Um, that is repeated layer after layer. Uh, these two-dimensional images are stacked on top of each other in the form of a powder bed. Parts are floating within that bed and then those parts are able to be excavated, separated from the loose powder that wasn't printed on and then those parts go on to be sintered in a furnace into a fully dense um, metal uh, object. Very cool. Um, so, you know, it sounds like this, this kind of technology can obviously, as we see here, go across a lot of different applications. Um, but where do you see the system really helping out that, you say, that mid-volume manufacturing shop? You know, what uh, kind of thing would they actually use this system for in concert with, you know, maybe the CNC machines they have or in concert with other additive technologies they might have? So machine shops and job shops uh, are faced with very unique challenges. Um, they have to be able to manufacture uh, single parts all the way through uh, what they would consider high volume manufacturing um, or what we would consider mid volume uh, manufacturing. And that's the entire life cycle of a part design from when the part is being developed and might be iterated through a number of different uh, modifications uh, to when the part has gained traction and is moving into higher volume and maybe produced by the tens uh, or the hundreds um, to when that part is in production and the job shop may be tasked with producing hundreds or even thousands of that part um, on a weekly, monthly, uh, or annual basis. And the shop system is designed specifically for those challenges, to be able to take a number of different part geometries, consolidate them together into single builds, and produce um, many, many different uh, net, near net shapes all in one print. Uh, to then take those near net shapes and consolidate those into builds that more focus on, um, on a ramping uh, demand and quantity or to take that part when it's ready for production and to dedicate entire builds to uh, that part. Now those builds are digital files, files that can be kept on the server within the machine shop uh, instead of on shelves uh, collecting dust and rust and eventually being obsoleted. These digital files can always be modified, always be changed and easily uh, be improved uh, by the, the job shop or by the customer. Cool. Um, so, you know, when we're talking about um, metal additive, you know, a lot of people are familiar with laser-based systems um, as kind of the, you know, the, the technology that's out there today that they might be, they might be familiar with. Um, so how does the binder jetting technology kind of compare uh, in the shop system compare to uh, laser-based systems, you know, as far as the parts that come off of it, uh, the process using it, the workflow, how does that kind of stack up? Yeah, so the uh, shop system is a, a room temperature uh, printing process. 
And what that means is that we do not raise the temperature of the powder or the process above um, the melting point of the powder during the printing process, which allows us to use less expensive powders, powders that we can then put through cleaning processes in the sintering uh, step, which we, we, can, um, we get for free uh, because we sinter the powders. In laser-based processes, that's not the case. In laser-based processes, the melt pool that's created by the laser traps contaminants, and so the powders need to be uh, extremely high purity um, and that, therefore, very expensive. And so the shop system is able to use a lot less expensive uh, powders and pass that cost savings onto the part itself. Um, and then the second thing is that the, the uh, shop system uh, prints at very, very high speeds, it utilizes this binder jetting technology to, uh, to print parts at much higher speeds than laser-based systems. And that passes on to part cost also. The more parts you can print in the shortest amount of time, um, the, more, uh, the more customers you can serve, uh, the lower you can uh, drive your, your production cost. Um, and then when those parts come out of the, the furnace and before they go to the customer, um, there's an aspect of finishing these parts. And uh, for laser-based processes, laser, the laser-based process must anchor these parts to the build table. Um, and it does that because the process of heating up the powder into a melt pool and then resolidifying it into a solid part creates a number of different stresses within that part, stresses that can warp the part and pull it in different directions. So by anchoring it to the build plate, you're able to control those stresses and then relieve them later on in the process through a post-processing step. Um, with binder jetting, the shop system eliminates the need to do that. And so we're able to produce our parts basically floating on these support setters, the same way that the studio system does it and the same way the production system does it. So you're, you're able to hand remove these supports uh, without any type of post-processing. And then those parts come off the printer, they look basically right this, right? Like this is straight off the printer, no, no finishing after, after the fact? That's exactly right. They look, they are a, a very clean, high resolution, near net shaped part. Awesome. Um, so after printing, so you know, say you, you have a part like this and you uh, are looking to, uh, to use it, uh, what can be done to this part, right? It's, it's metal, so can you, you know, take it and do other operations that you would do to metal with it? Absolutely, so these parts are the same solid, fully dense metal parts um, that, that you get out of other machining or casting operations. You can do the same exact things to this metal that you can do to any other uh, metal part or any other part that was manufactured in a different way. It's the same chemistry. When we say 17,4 pH, it's the exact same recipe of 17,4 pH that you would get if you just bought 17,4 pH off the shelf. And that is very critical for doing post-processing like heat treats. You can heat treat this material um, and precipitation harden it into many, many different states. And that's super beneficial. Uh, that's what makes 17,4 such a diverse um, and versatile uh, material to use, especially by machine shops. And so the shop system was really designed to work in concert with all of these types of finishing operations that are possible uh, and already exist in machine shops. Machine shops will have a number of different cutting tools and finishing tools and polishing tools and you name it. Um, so parts can come off of the shop system, out of the furnace, and go into very, very high precision machining steps if necessary or into polishing steps depending on what the customer needs. Very cool. Um, so, you know, this, this product, uh, 3D printing, uh, you know, metal 3D printing in particular is something that I, I can be kind of scary for, for people that don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, but as far as using this, uh, this system and actually, you know, getting your, your CAD files from your computer printed and then through the whole process, uh, how is that for a, you know, say someone who's relatively new to um, you know, 3D printing or especially metal 3D printing? Is it, uh, you know, a straightforward process or what's kind of the steps, steps involved there? Yeah, 3D printing can be rather intimidating uh, when you look at it on the surface, but once you get into it, um, especially with the shop system, it's really a push and go process. The files are loaded, they're, they're prepped into the, the shape of the box in which they're printed, um, and printing is literally the touch of a button. Um, the shop system is a fully autonomous printing process uh, in which the parts are, um, are printed page after page after page with, with no interaction um, after the customer has pushed start. Very cool. Um, so then, obviously a lot of, you know, in manufacturing it's, it's a big cost game, right? Um, so when we're talking about part costs and throughput and things like that, 
um, you know, maybe for, for some of the parts on the table or maybe uh, some different metric, uh, what is someone looking at uh, for part cost uh, and, and throughput from the system? You know, how long would it take to do one of those builds and something like that? Yeah, so we measure part cost um, by, uh, on like a dollar per cubic centimeter basis. So for instance, um, once you've printed your box of parts, uh, it takes the same amount of time no matter what's inside of that box. And so the shop, the shop system, all in cost, depreciated of the machine, depreciation of the machine, the cost of the raw materials, of the binder ink, uh, and of the labor and electricity costs um, is about a dollar to three dollars per cc. Now, of course, that's very dependent and fluctuates depending on the geometry of the part and, and how many parts you can pack into this box in one time, um, but it's somewhere within that range. And then as far as uh, you know, throughput, you were talking about the build box, but how big is that actual build box? You know, how many parts can you put in you know, one run that you, you know, click print on? So that's what's really cool about the way that we've designed the shop system. Is we've designed it to be flexible. Um, we offer four different sizes of build box. You can go from a four liter to an eight liter to a, uh, a 12 liter uh, or a 16 liter. And that goes in about increments of 50 millimeter tall builds. So you're printing at a 50 millimeter tall depth, 100, 150 or 200 millimeter depth, depending on what the shop needs. Now, sweet spot for the system is around eight to 12 liters. And that's really where um, you've matched the capacity of the, of the printer with the speed of the furnace um, and everything works in, uh, in concert. But the beauty of the system is it's scalable. You can add more printers, you can add more furnaces, you can use industrial furnaces. Um, you, can, you can basically buy, uh, pick and choose a la carte what you need um, and how you would like to scale based upon the capacity of your shop. Very cool. Um, so, you know, talking through cost, cost still, the uh, pricing for, for a system like this, um, you know, typically additive metal is kind of a, a crazy, crazy price point uh, for a lot of different systems, the laser-based systems, things like that. Uh, where does the shop system kind of fit in and, and how does that match uh, the, the market of, you know, the machine shops and the job shops that they're looking to, to enter? Yes, we wanted to lower the barrier to entry for machine shops um, who often can't afford millions of dollars worth of investment. Um, and so we have, um, the shop system starts at $150,000, which is affordable uh, by nearly every um, shop that's out there. And, um, and then you can scale from that. You can add on the different uh, capacity, um, the, the different machines that you need to grow. Um, but um, we, we wanted to make the uh, entry level very, very affordable uh, for as many shops as possible. And then lastly, you know, uh, customers, you know, listen to this, very excited about it. Um, you know, when can they expect to see this, uh, this system in their shop, you know, printing these parts, uh, you know, 16 liters a day? Well, we are ramping um, and trying to get this printer out as quickly as we possibly can. And it's looking like um, the fall of this year, um, Q3, Q4 is when we'll start to ship. Awesome. Uh, so thanks, Jonah. Uh, be sure to check out our website for more information. There's a bunch of great uh, details, spec sheets, things like that on the shop system. Uh, and then uh, feel free to check out the Resource Center to learn a little bit more about uh, these parts and uh, the rest of the systems we have. Thanks for joining us.